this is what I say as well. That, keep this in. Is that with the <laughs> with the tra- this annoys me where people are like it's gay to like trans women. If you're a straight guy who likes trans women, it's gay. And I'm like, I fucking wish <laughs> like. I would much rather date a gay guy than a straight guy. It's not the flex that the trans folks think it is because they think they're like telling me, oh, you're, yeah. you're gay. It's like, I fucking wish I was, I was like, all my friends are gay guys yeah. and they're all much hotter and much nicer and know how to wipe their bum than the straight boys I'm dealing with. So like, I'm like, yeah, like, f- I fucking wish. You know what I mean? Like, it's so fucking annoying. Welcome to The Outtakes, the official podcast of National Student Pride, the podcast where we go behind the scenes with a series of incredible guests doing their bit for the LGBTQ plus community. Today I'm joined by Charlie Craggs, actress and trans activist. How are you, Charlie? Thank you for I'm all right. Um, I don't know if you're all right, um, because I've realised I really smell of curry. <laughs> I, I, I literally have my like, curry stains all over me. And I do know this is being filmed, like, I never get video. So, we um, love a relatable girl. Uh, it's fine. Do you have a stinky girl? Yeah. Poo Just bear. a lot of tear to my yeah. eye right now. <laughs> they literally smell crazy right now. So, Charlie, so on this podcast, we sort of like to do go behind the scenes about our guests, get to know a bit about their lives, and do get together a bit of a character profile. Um, I just want to get to know a bit. What was your experience coming to terms with your transness? And what was that like for you? Um... I was gonna make a joke, you're like, I haven't, <laughs> but um, do you know what? I actually really have, and I was thinking that the other day, like when I when I was on the tube, and um, just like I I like remember a time like where like I I just said like ten times, but as in like, oh my god, I said it again. It's fine, but, editing, <laughs> editing. No, you can leave that in. It's relatable. <laughs> I went to school around here. Relatable like, curry sauce girl. I was going in Hounslow, so but um, I we're talking of going to school in Hounslow. Like, I was sh- such a like a really like. I was a victim growing up. Like, I was very, 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 like, sensitive and soft. And, like, obviously being queer, very visibly queer, like, so painfully, obviously queer, um, I would just be, obviously, picked on. Um, and But, like I said, I was a, a very much a victim, so I wouldn't stand up for myself. And, like, I'd be very nervous all the time. And, like, I'm just... I feel like, relating to your question of, like, coming into my transness and accepting myself, I'm just, at this point... Like, because even once I came out as trans, I was still that. Like, I was mm. I was terrified to get the tube. And I was like, I remember the first time I got on the tube, I literally, like, I felt like I was going to have a heart attack. And I, like, stood at the back of the carriage, like, with my face towards, like, the, the, like, the, the so back that, wall. Yeah, yeah, so that no one in the carriage could see me. Because I knew I looked so bad. And I yeah. knew the minute someone looks at me, they're going to know I'm trans. And bear in mind, this is a different time. This is, like, 10 years ago now. So, like, so you're almost, like, hiding yourself in plain sight. Oh, because yeah. I, I literally just even walk into the tube station, I would be getting, like, the stairs and laughs and all that so um and I just was I was really proud of myself because the other day I just like clocked I was like I'm so proud of like I've just like I'm so confident and sure Mm. of myself now in a way that like I just couldn't have imagined being that once when I first came out as trans or even looking back even prior to transition just being like the very obviously queer kid it's like it's like a 360 and like yeah I'm just I'm yeah. really proud of myself yeah. and it wasn't even conscious I don't know what I'm proud of because it's just like it just it's just you know what it is it's just like a natural like stepping into yourself it's just, yeah. it basically is the embodiment of it gets better because by default it just mm. gets better it's not that I try to make it better it's just that you just get better mm. you get better it's a process yeah and like it just things get better naturally because you become sure of yourself and stronger and because that's one of the reasons I really enjoy following you is that you are unapologetically yourself and any time you ever face any sort of discrimination or transphobia, you call them out and you're oh. so sassy. And I don't just like, call them out. Yeah, you... <laughs> My mantra yeah. has become bully the bully. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not just going to call you out. I'm going to bully you. I'm going to go. I'm going to, I'm going to like ruin your life. You want to ruin my life? I can ruin mm. yours. Just worse. try. Yeah. Just try. try. Oh, as I say, try me, bitch. Try. Kid LGBT is for try, try me, me, bitch. bitch. <laughs> yeah, literally, like, I, I like, and do you know why I do that? Like, because I'm sure that some people will like be like, oh, that's just me. You're so me. I think some people don't get me, like, especially brands these days. They might be a bit like, oh, it's just, you know, they'll PR. Yeah. PR, yeah. I'm not, maybe I'm, I'm a PR nightmare, but my thing is that I don't fucking, I'm not trying to make. A, a boardroom full yeah. of straight white men like me. I'm trying to make the gays like me. Yeah, you don't want almost like a sanitised version of yourself. No. Just, yeah. 
And like, I'm doing it for, going back to your last question, for that little kid that I was, grow, growing up and going to school to a really rough all boys school around mm. here in Hounslow in a fucking shithole. The way I am now, especially on social media and in real life, because it's not just a social media character, like you saw the, what, uh, the video when I got spat on, like I very much stood up. I gave yeah. him as good as he gave me. It all started because he threw a can at me yeah. and it, and then I- And he spat on you during COVID, right? Yeah, like, but like I, I picked up the can my friend was like, oh, come on, let's just ignore him. And I'm like, no! So I picked up the can and I threw it back at him. But I missed because I'm LGBT. So then I was like, no, I'm still not done. I'm going to keep picking up the can and throwing it at him until I re until I get him because he was running away. And that I'm doing, so I'm just saying, it's not just a social media personality thing, but the reason I do it on social media as well is because I want the queer little kids who, like I was, to see someone like me not being a victim because it's so important Like that we're just... Like in culturally have just always been like we are the victims like yeah. queer people we're the bottom of the it's just always punched it's down straight like, people yeah. punching down and then just stays as like no it's just the playground then through life it's like, yeah. literally that and i'm like it's not fucking high school anymore this yeah. is not the playground anymore bully the bully you yeah. want to give you want to give me some you're you're one it because yeah. you're asking for it like i will give it to you 10 you're dying times for it. yeah i will literally you're dying for it like i'm just get off my back get, get off literally get your spit off my face that like, i'm gonna <laughs> I like, yeah, I'm just, my whole thing is just standing up for yourself because we shouldn't, I'm so tired of us being victims and of myself being a victim. And um, yeah, so that's why I am as vocal as I am on social media and just like making sure that people, especially the next generation of queer kids have someone to look to, to just be like, oh, like we, we you don't have to just accept that. And like, and like that for me, like that was like Pete Burns, yeah. Nadia, people like that. Pete who Burns, just, don't oh. start with me, Pete Burns. Pete Burns is my everything. You're insincere you to the point of nausea. <laughs> don't include yeah. that. That's a really bad impression, but. <laughs> literally, uh, because... wanna, come look at my vagina. Uh, no. <laughs> literally, I, you don't understand. I hope you can feel it. Like Pete Burns is my everything. Mm. And it's because they, uh, like, mm. literally the first moment of going in, into the house, like they were like heckled obviously by people in the crowd. They just, I remember like- But he clip, wasn't a victim. Like that. He and, wasn't a victim. And that's, and that's what it yeah. was. I was going to all boys secondary school in Hounslow at that yeah. time. And I remember like going in the next day and just like starting to stand up for myself yeah. more because I remember- He was feared every oh. time he'd enter the oh, room. And that's great. what I want to be. Yeah. I want straight people to be scared of me. <laughs> and they are. Yeah, they are. They should be. Literally. We're a bit scared. Oh, of <laughs> I think everyone is. But also like the boys, like with the straight boys on the apps, like they'll be like, I'm like, they look at my Instagram. They're like, I'm so scared. I'm going to become another Instagram video. Because, like, people know now, like, you don't fuck with Charlie Craggs. Yeah. I'm just saying. Do you feel like that confidence came with gaining more popularity on online? No, because I've, no. like, yeah. I've, I've always been this way. As in, like, I've always, in, in the recent years, and maybe in the last, it was when I transitioned. It was maybe, like, a year into transition where I was like, I've left a part of myself behind when I transitioned. And let me tell you what else I'm leaving behind. I'm leaving behind that victim status, that shyness. It that Shyness mm. gets you nowhere. You don't get a gold star for being quiet and nice. Like you need to. Like I'm just like no, so no. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm reinventing myself. Or re, not reinventing myself. I'm rebranding. Rebranding re re myself. <laughs> yeah. Um. So my my brand. Sorry, it's not on brands. <laughs> my brand. Yes. Yeah, so I'm like no. Sorry, being shy and being like a little wallflower is not on my brand anymore. And I'm gonna start you know like standing up for myself and being loud and you know like i said doing it for that younger kid i think like i was like a big part of what i do is just about for queer kids mm. and because what i always find really interesting in school is when kids are bullied at like for being gay or queer when they are you know around 10 10 years old that child hasn't hit puberty yet they don't have no they don't have a sexuality so you yeah. are targeting They'd... that child because of the way they're expressing their gender and like because it doesn't align yeah. with your idea of how they should act and it's I, just it's, it's just fucked it up. is so that shows that like why transness and gayness are so linked and mm. why like as much as like i just made a joke about being straight and i'm kind of, i am pan i guess but like it's we're different mm. but we're the same and the yeah. people who hate us the, hate yeah, literally both of us. Hate, and they hate us for the same thing because like they hate femininity they hate like the the non-conformity of it it's like because if if you were like i there were boys in my year who've come out as gay now but they got no shit in school because they were i was the only one who was out at the time and like they i, I didn't actually choose to be out i was just so obviously gay mm. or something there that was I, no yeah but like the boys in my year like the the fucking sports whatever it's called sports captain and I feel like that's such the a sports captain the sports captain the captain of the sports <laughs> um, this like the coolest guy in the whole year like the, like the tallest strongest coolest guy now he's out and I'm like but if people didn't hate him because 
he wasn't he was conf- he was he's not he's gender conforming so really like a lot of homophobia is it's it's almost like it's kind of blurry with transfer yeah. because it's about gender conformity yeah. and like you know so i think that's and performing that gender and then when you don't yeah. do it you become a target yeah so like yeah and like you said like with kids who are as i was seven when i first got and i remember going home to my mum my mum remembers it as well when i first got called like oh you're gay you're gay and i was like i don't even know what gay means yeah. i was seven like and i was a very innocent i was in very old. yeah i i think i was in, i was just very naive um yeah so like mm. you know kids are getting called gay from as young as whatever mm. And it's like, I, I didn't know. I, and I wasn't gay, clearly. Like, I was a girl. Get it right. Like, the point is, like, I had this label put on me. And that actually stunted my, like, yeah. my like my growth in myself. because And not even my growth, but just my understanding of myself. Because I was told I was gay. I assumed I was because I knew I liked guys. But I never felt like a guy. And I'm not a guy. Like, I, I just, I, like, even I found my diary from when I was around, like, a young like maybe like 13 14 and i like found that like, i was like shaving my legs and i was like saying like oh i'm or even my face i was like i'm so scared my parents are gonna find like my rays and they're gonna find out i have to shave my face and i'm like boys are so proud of shaving at that age like why was i a little yeah. fucking oh my god dear diary i'm so scared <laughs> that my mom's gonna find my razor what she gonna do when she finds out i have to shave my face i just want to shave my legs what? i just want to shave my legs straight boys don't think like that or like not even straight boys just cisgender mm. boy and i'm like or oh. i was just like it's so painfully yeah. obvious i was trans but because i had the whole fucking world the and the whole of and the, yeah. sutton estate in labrick grove telling me gay boy gay boy batty man chitty man I, I i was like okay i guess i'm gay but like it really stunted mm. my and that's why i was I'm, i guess relatively i'm quite young compared to some trans people i was like 20 21 when i came out as trans at your age now yeah. <laughs> so yeah so um yeah it's just it, it really like when when we're talking about like um bullying in school like that it just it just is so fucking detrimental in so many ways you know yeah. and you mentioned your you the first time you were about seven when you'd go home and tell your mom was she yeah. pretty did she back you she was like well are you are you a faggot <laughs> <laughs> she goes are you a cop sucker <laughs> get out my hat no she no no my mom is ally she is amazing yeah. um you've just am i right in saying you've just bought a house together yeah a yeah. cottage yeah, two girls happen? one cottage yeah. so um my mom's gonna be an influencer as well now yeah. so i'm gonna throw her into the limelight and she's and you've honestly, literally just rejected patriarchy and decided to start like, yes. the crags matriarchal dynasty absolutely and, and we're gonna name the cottage after us it's got a name it's called like i'm actually i can't say that because someone could look up and find me <laughs> don't unless you're really hot but um yeah it's um it's um yeah like two single gals you know like with very both working class like we both grew up in labrick grove um um and like you know the world is stacked against you if you're not in a in a couple yeah. and you can't like get a joint like a joint yeah. income or whatever it's for like the deposit and the mortgage so like yeah like mum do you know what I mean we, we were like let's stick together yeah. like, but, how did so, that conversation come about because that's quite like a step it right? came about like, just saying let's do that together let's do it. that's yeah. literally what it was yeah no, literally like I'm, i don't know actually um we, we just always been very close like my mum's my everything literally it, i feel so lucky to have a parent mm. that is oh my dad's really accepting as well but like, i'm i'm much i'm very close to my mum and like just uh have a parent that just is so in your corner and also i guess if in a house of you were like it seems like it was a male dominated house oh, with like two massively. brothers and a dad. Two brothers, so a then dad. It's nice my to have dad's that, like, a builder. My brothers are like very boyish. Like it was all boxing. My dad's like an ex um like weight like body. I don't know. Okay. My brothers are both doing that now. Like my mum's even more boyish than me. So <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like say so it was a very male dominated yeah. house. And my mum like my we're very like a religious like Christian. Yeah. Um, actually Catholic. Catholic. I'm more. I'm more yeah. yeah oh. Did you go to a Catholic or boys school? Yes, mate. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> So my mum was like, oh, if you're going to get bullied, you're going to get really bullied. And she was like, and also it was it's like... It's baptism by fire. <laughs> it was like an hour uh, an hour away from, or not even an hour, like an hour and a half away as well. There's like a school at the end of our road. She's like, no, I want you to be bullied an hour and a half away. <laughs> so you've got like a whole journey of bullying as well on the way home. But um, I It's going to be SAS, SAS who does wins. No, but do you know what? <laughs> I'm kind of glad because it's made me. Like, yeah. I, obviously I'm not glad. At the time, I like don't, not trigger warning. I don't know how I didn't, you know, what myself because it was. I stayed there for seven years because I was like, I'm not moving for sixth form. I know I'm going to be bullied anyway, so I stayed for seven years. 
stick with the bullies you know. Yeah, literally, at least I know <laughs> the bullies. I know, like, yeah. Their weaknesses. Yeah, no, but literally, and I would get to know their mm. weaknesses because then towards the end, that's when I started, like, when I saw people like Pete Burns, mm. um, you can do the maths and work out maze, but that was, like, towards the end of my school era. Like, I was, like... <laughs> era? I, yeah, my era. <laughs> this but, is my school era. And then I went into my villain era after seeing <laughs> Pete and I'd start, like, arguing back yeah. with the bullies and they'd be, like, the minute they got, like, a, a fucking sassy gay person who can argue a lot better, then they yeah. might be able to throw hands better. But even I can throw hands because I grew up with two brothers, mm. like, so, like the few fights I got in I won and those people would never start on me again yeah, yeah I just wish I could do school again and just like just have gone in differently because like the way to like deal with people like that as well like any it's a bit of advice is like I, I just wish I could go back and just like when people be like are you gay I'd be like yeah, yeah, I didn't say well, no at the time. I just like didn't. I just was. Froze, a, I was a yeah. mute, and I just didn't argue back with people. So when people because you like, didn't have the information to be like, yes, I can confidently answer that. Like, you, but also yeah. I just obviously was not straight. So yeah. like, I'm, I'm not gonna. I wasn't. I wasn't out hiding in the closet. But at the same time, I was just like, I don't. I, I'm not gonna speak to somebody's bullying me. But now I wish I'd be like, yeah, I am. Are you interested? Yeah. I would like really like make them so uncomfortable. Yeah. I'd be like, I would like but really. Yeah, because yeah. that's what they don't like when. When you flip yeah, the script, yeah. they're expecting you to be like, no, I'm not gay. And then, it's the, and then if you're like, like, yeah, you are, yeah. yeah, I am. Do you want to kiss? Let's kiss. <laughs> like, you know, and just like embarrass them. We, like, we sort of have touched on like, you know, having them queer icons growing up, like Nadia and Pete Burns. Yeah. So for you growing up, who were your like access points into like queer culture? Like what, what was almost like your access points in Saving Grace throughout that? It would have been like, because yeah. they both come from Big Brother. So yeah. for me, like Big Brother, Brilliant. huge, like, like, it was how I, I, I'd never seen, I didn't even know what trans was until I saw Nadia Big Brother. So I would have been like 12, no, 13, 14 at the time when I saw B, uh, Nadia Big Brother. So that was like 2005, six, maybe, I don't know. And um, yeah, I like had never, I didn't even know what trans was. So like when I saw her, I just was like, oh, I have like a word for how I feel now. Yeah. Like straight away, something resonated. Yeah. And I was, because growing up, I would tell my mum like, I want to be, I'm, I'm a girl. Not even yeah. I want to be a girl, I'm a girl. And I didn't know you could do it. Like yeah. obviously I was a child, I was literally a child. My mum <laughs> didn't, didn't know. do it. My mum didn't know you could do it either, clearly, because she just assumed I was gay. She did like, she, she we grew up in like, a council state in Ladbroke Grove where like just, it wasn't part, I mean, even generally, in, in even in different like parts of, uh, like uh, England, it wasn't part of the cultural conversation, but definitely there, like, I, there was no understanding about transness. So like, and it was only when I saw her and I was like, oh, like I like straight away it resonated with me, and I like I just yeah like I had a word for how I felt now and a person to look mm -hmm. at and be like, that's what I am, that's how I feel. She didn't care. She if she would be like, what 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 are you gonna do? What are you gonna do in people's face? What are you gonna do? <laughs> what are you gonna I love her so much. She, we're friends now as oh, well. Yeah, yeah oh, like okay. so we're not friends, friends but now? like she's a hairdresser oh, okay. and she's like getting big on social media again. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, she's really good. We're having a bit of does. a Big Brother Renaissance now. So I, can... they should do like an all star. Like they yeah. did kind of do but one, like, but like it wasn't mm, really, they, it wasn't given. And yeah. also, Nadia, it was so sad to see like Nadia. The reason she left, obviously, the kind of limelight is because she was like slaughtered it's because crazy. like yeah, yeah, she like fell from grace and just for standing up for herself. And if you watch it back, like. I don't know what era the All Stars one was. It was, but that was when she like... fell off the chair. She was like, "Stupid fucking." <laughs> Are you alright, Sam? Oh, bugger fucking hell! Bloody so fucking stupid, stupid that chair. That's so, <laughs> that <was> so funny. <laughs> but also, how crazy! Like, think about like the climate we're in now. I could not like having a trans person win what like fifteen years ago, Big yeah. Brother, and now like oh, it have, was a yeah, shift. Yeah, like, the shift has been like completely the other way. It's absolutely yeah. mental. It's crazy. It's really crazy because obviously we had Hallie on Big Brother yeah. this year. I love Tally. Like, I'm oh, yeah, so yeah. sad she got yeah. out so quick soon. It's crazy to to see like even just the discourse like around her like even just on the first night, mm. just like she's an eighteen year old, and so there's like young. grown adults like on Twitter or X where it's called now, just like like just laying into her like and for just existing as a trans. person. And do you know what she like, handled herself in that house oh, so well? Like did she? Yeah, so well. Like she was having she was being so open. And able to have really level-headed yeah. conversations that were really able to just perfectly articulate her experience to people, yeah. and I just think that is that it was just incredible to watch someone so young and know themselves so well. Yeah, and that's what I think. Like I've always tried because I the reason I'm like in the media now is because I started a campaign uh, called Nail Transphobia when I was in when I was your age yeah. when I was in the end of uni. And um, I so it was where I basically travelled around the country of a pop-up nail salon and let the public kind of ask meet me whatever they want person. like meet yeah. a trans person you get to sit down while I do your nails and you can ask me whatever you want and um it was about that just a bit like 
get, giving people a chance to like speak to us, but also like because what is it? Only ten percent of the British public have actually ever met. Oh, I don't person. know is that. Is, I like, don't that know. Wouldn't we'll have to me, we'll have to fact check like, that, but I'm not sure. Very well, like, even yeah. me, I didn't know a trans person until about two years into my transition. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like when there's very we're one like I think it's like one percent of the population. There's very few of us, and um, like Halley, it's just the that, fact that like we're not what we're being painted out to be in the media. We're like we're like being painted out. I mean, first of all, in that we're like predators, but also in the sense of <laughs> no, but like literally yeah. like we're being made out like we are rapists and predators. Mm. But like as in also like. We're not these people who are so like offended by everything. Like I mm. get misgendered all day every day. I literally don't. I'm like, if you do it with malice, it's different. Yeah. And then, then I'm gonna throw the can back at you, like with that boy. But as in like, we're not like. If you ask me a question, I'm not gonna be like, you can't ask me that. I'm calling the police. Yeah. Oh, you are misgendered me. Like I'm yeah. like, we are just. We're like really. We're just normal yeah. people. And you're like, yeah, you can ask me that. Like you're trying mean? to just create a space where people can actually one to one. They can have like an honest. And yeah, open, but like, even just outside of that, like Halley, I'm just like, I'm so sick. Of, I'm like, how have we the the PR campaign against us to paint us? as these people who are like offended by everything and are gonna you know Woke, like call, yeah. call the police if you misgender us and it's against the law to all and like that we're like you know just like no like what like well, where did that come from like what like i don't yeah i don't know it just makes me so angry because that's not who we are yeah like at all no i think like anyone that's sort of gone through any sort of coming out experience or transition experience they're normally like the toughest people literally, in the room. So like, literally. we've seen it all. Well, so we've, like, we've heard it all. Also, are we thinking about bringing back nail transphobia? Absolutely not, because <laughs> I do not have, I've been through a lot, like I've really, like it's been a hard, I'm, trigger warning. I lost my best friend in Grenfell a few years ago and like, I'm just not, I'm not the same person. Oh, I'm just like really straight, and it's okay. But like I'm, re yeah, just like other things as well. But like, you know, like that's what as well I wish people who are transphobic would understand or even people who are in the middle who are watching this all play out in the media, like, oh, trans women this and versus women and da da da. Like we, we're, we're like the heart of this debate and it feels like all we ever exist for is to debate people and like to prove to Piers Morgan like that we're worthy of like human rights mm -hmm. and it's like I just I want to die right now like my best friend has just been burned alive like I'm just like <laughs> I, I have bigger problems than whether you think I'm a woman yeah. or not and I don't I really don't it's not care. your cost like, to bear at the end of the day I'm just kind of, like yeah. can you just we're people too we're not just uh like and identities for you to just argue, or people for you to just argue with and debate and we're the, we just exist for you to debate we're like people who are struggling too like do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's fucking hard. So, like, I, yeah, I'm not, I, I don't have it in me to do nail transphobia again. I might, I was thinking, I might bring it back because I've been on hiatus. <laughs> Please hiatus. do, my nails are yeah. shit. Oh, my nails are my shit as shocking. well. <laughs> but I might do it where, like, I, like, basically, um, uh, franchise it's like I say like anyone okay. oh any she's a trans. business woman oh, oh she's a she's a journalist she's a journalist she's a but, like, journalist. but I, I like as in like I can use the funding I would have got to like give to the girls who want to do it and yeah. I'll be like you can you can carry the cross yeah. like the cross that's actually the, <laughs> carry the that's cross. the opposite of it is the carry the torch is the saying yeah. <laughs> not the cross you're not going to be crucified <laughs> but like as in like I think it's so important but I just don't have it in me and yeah. it's a different time culturally for trans people when I started 10 years ago the problem was that people didn't understand track like didn't even know what the word mm. trans meant literally on like the first Whereas conversation no it's they know too every, much and they're like actually every, um yeah. so do you think trans women should be playing sports and it's like i, I don't actually care like yeah. how many trans women are playing sports <laughs> like with these big tits like no offense like it's really <laughs> out of proportion yeah. this amount of arguing about sport or about toilets or about kids because it's like fuck me but um what i'm doing now i've pivoted and i'm focusing my activism towards my like so tackling transphobia in the past was about making allies and now i'm like okay clearly that wasn't working <laughs> so now, now i try my best uh, 10 years on i'm like focusing on like the trans people in the situation and not about the allies and just like with my self-defense classes i started charlie's angels, yeah, charlie's angels that's so cool yeah. that also great brand new great name. i know yeah. although potentially getting i could get sued who knows because <laughs> like, i did the bbc they came to It'll my good launch party. yeah for the, <laughs> might have to change the name the, when they came to my launch party bbc news and it was like live and my friend said just before it, she was like all you have to remember is it's charlie's self-defense angels you can't say charlie's angels and then the last thing i'm like so it's charliesangels.com i'm like oh no, no, it's not. It's um, Charlie's self defense agents. Please don't sue me. Literally, like, live on fucking BBC yeah. News. So, literally, over before it even starts. Yeah, I'm like, well, that was fun. <laughs> but it, I really am honestly gagging to get on with that because, like, that is, yeah, I just, I, I know it's what I'm meant to be doing. What type of self defense is it? 
I don't know yet, because we're, we're starting <laughs> literally in this, what, what day are we on now? About a month I'm imagining away. you like the sensei of like a dojo. Oh, I'm yeah. not the one teaching the baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm clearly not a very physical person, so I've, I've got a trans self-defense trainer. Hey, Rhea. Um, so, shout out to Rhea. Yeah, shout out to Rhea, <laughs> lovely trans girl. Um, so she's going to be teaching, I'm facilitating, and then after the like session, I'll then be holding like a, because I want to, I don't want it all to be about like hardness and like tackling transphobia in the sense of like fighting and, or not fighting, sorry, self-defending yourself, but as in like, um, but as in um, bringing some softness back in and tackling transphobia in that way as well in terms of like building community and having people that you can talk to and like get advice for about things and you know, like start having like a kind of community aspect to the classes as well. Like, I think they're going to be really important. Yeah. It's like, it's like I've made the classes that like I would go to as a trans person because I've never been to a self-defense class. Yeah. I'm so no, excited. It's, really so it's cool. launching yeah. literally in this, I don't know when this comes out, but like it launches like end of Feb. So keep okay. an eye out and go to charliesselfdefenseangels.com uh, to register interest and um, yeah, yeah, you can sign up for the classes and stuff. It's all free. Hashtag, please don't sue Cameron Diaz. Yeah, please. I feel like Cameron Diaz is she, an ally. She's an ally. Though. We saw her on Drag yeah. Race. She seemed to yeah, yeah, seemed yeah. have a good time. So, as you know, we're here with National Student Pride. And um, we, what we do want to sort of get to know a bit more about is your student experience. And am I right in saying you studied fashion in London? Yeah, can't you yeah. tell? <laughs> From my curry, curry sauce. sauce. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yummy. It's called fashion. It's called fashion. <laughs> Look it up. Yeah, literally. Like, I like to accessorize with a, a little bit of curry. A little bit spice. On the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I went to uh, London College of Fashion. I went yeah. to St. St. Martin's and then to London College of Fashion. Okay. Um, um, when did your, like, love for fashion begin? <laughs> Do you know Are what? we waiting Actually, for it to no, happen no. still? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, drag me. Okay. But, but also, no, actually really nice segue because like as a child, uh like I, I was I had so much flair. Like not even just a child, like teenager, like I was very ahead of the trend. I'd like even like to the point of like it, it, yeah, even like I don't know. Like I went like I said, I went to a boys' school. I remember like being the first person in my school the inventor of the man bag, like having a huge, like I saw it, it was when there was only one on set, like as in like there was only one style that you could buy and it was like H&M, it was a huge man bag. And I remember getting so bullied of like, oh, Charlie, uh, not a different name then, but like with the handbag, um, Charlie's handbag. And then like a year later, Everyone's every fucking boy had a handbag, like a man bag. <laughs> and I'm thinking, and, and a the little same Chanel way, purse. Like, yeah, I, so I basically, long story short, I had a lot of flair and I was, very just like yeah i was kind of synonymous with like being fashion. That. fashion i was synonymous, I was synonymous with fashion, with fashion. <laughs> uh like just pushing the bar and like i went i got into st martin's and then i got into london college of fashion and um i like but then what it was is i transitioned and well at uni like right at the end like my last okay. year so like literally because nail transphobia was my final project at oh, uni oh okay yeah so oh, like, okay yeah. origin story exclusive <laughs> no it's not an exclusive but um yeah so like I like come out as, I was very even in uni like I like I said went to St Martin's and I was like very avant-garde I, dr I would dress like I'd wear very more makeup than I wore. Very Chantropay, good reference. <laughs> but I would wear like more makeup than I do now. I'd wear like, I'm not even wearing makeup now because it's being filmed, but I'd like, yeah. <laughs> I was um like very like over the top. And then like, I lost that when I transitioned because I went from like that to being someone who was just wanted to blend in because I was getting so much attention that I didn't want it in the street where like everyone was- Almost everyone, going back to basics. Everyone was staring at me. I looked so bad. Like, you think I look bad now? You should have seen me <laughs> 10 years ago, yeah. I had, my jaw was about here. My hairline was up to here. I, like, I had I had, I had a nose, like, I've had everything done. So, like, if you think I look bad now, I looked, I can promise you, I looked a lot worse than I had a wig on my head that was bad. Like, oh, I didn't know how to dress. I didn't know how to do makeup. Like, it was fucking rough. And, like, so I just wanted to blend in. So I started, like, just, like, dressing down. Like, because I'm, like... Is it almost like going back to, like, the teen... For, like, what teenage years must, must be for girls, right? Because you're having to, like, learn all this new stuff. And, yeah, like, learn how to apply it. Later, but, like, yeah, 10 years later. Yeah. So I was, like, 23 or 21. And, like, doing that. And I'm, like, oh, my God. And But also, it was, like, the style as well. So, like, for me, like I said, like, I was very, like, known for my flair. And then I just lost it. And like, I've... Even now, like, I'm only just getting back to it. So, like, I've... Re I'm, like really making a conscious decision now clearly not today <laughs> but um when i'm like, like especially when i'm going to like a big event or something i'm like turning looks now and i'm like kind of getting known for like doing something a bit like out there or yeah. conscious. And, and that's who i was and it's like really like it's so nice to do things for your inner child and like like my mom kept saying like stop like hiding your light under a, 
a bush. What is it? A bushel? A bushel? A bush? I is don't. That an old maiden saying? Is, I don't know. Like, is that an old maiden kind yeah. of? What? What is that? It's a bushel. I don't even yeah, know like what that hide is. Hiding your light, like basically oh, like yeah. hiding your shine, <laughs> like your light. She's like, stop dulling your shine. Yeah, don't like, dim your light. Yeah, don't dim your light. I should have just said that. Why yeah. Why hiding say, your say bushel. Bush again. <laughs> bush. Um. So, and yeah, and, and now I'm just like, no, like I'm gonna stand out because yeah. I'm meant to stand Look out. Look at me. Because I'm better than you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Charlie, we, we did touch on your um, fashion looks and how you're now getting a bit more playful when it comes to your red carpet looks. Yeah. So we've got a little segment for you where we're going to look at <laughs> look back at some oh, of your no. old red carpet looks. Oh, look. Oh, the ones from Student Pride. No, just, oh, just I was across the them. <laughs> you get further and further back, you're like, oh, girl. <laughs> but um, if you could just talk us through the look and what was your thought process, what the event was for, you know, just a bit of a oh, walk down memory lane. Let's go. <laughs> So the first oh, image. Yes. Oh yes. I'm sorry. I, yes, making my inner child proud. Honestly, oh it's like Black Widow kind of. Yes. Woman. Oh what? yeah. I was like, oh, you 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 think of me as a villain? I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna be your villain. Like I was. So this is a dress by Narcissism, a uh, trans designer, design house. Uh, my friend um, Santana runs and um so i like was like i want to showcase like a like i've got this amazing opportunity to be walking the red carpet at the glamour women of the year awards and i want to make sure that like, i'm representing like someone like from my community and uh give it like especially like it's like a, like not like a just a brand that's already known but i want i want to push that out yeah. there and I, I was one of the top no, looks of the night. It's, like, it's incredible. I like I was not I yeah. definitely not one of the most famous people there, but I made it into the short clip of they put all like Rita Aura, like Laramie Anderson, all the like the people like Leanne Pinnock, like all the looks from the red carpet and I got into it and I was like really proud of myself. But do you know what the gag is? What? I was wearing Converse's under that. <laughs> Very Lizzie McGuire, <laughs> like Cinderella movie with her like big white prom dress of uh, pink converses underneath. Just such a relatable woman. Okay, not that okay. one, but that's definitely a boot. But like for the, also this one makes me laugh so much because I got so much hate online from really? like uh, homophobes who oh. clearly are young and just don't get, get the, the reference. reference. So they're like, oh, you're so weird. Why is your bra out? Like, they're like, oh, like what are you doing? What are you wearing? And I'm like, it's the Have Mean Girls Have you not seen premiere. the film? Like, yeah. Do you not watch the show, Tamar? No. Like, literally, it's like, it's Mean Girls. Of course I'm going to have my bra out. Sorry that like, I'm a, a, a fashion innovator. Like, literally, like, I was, I, like, turned the party that And also, night. gays love a reference. Yes. They do. Literally. But also, were you not worried about someone else turning up in the same look? No, because I know that I'm that girl and other people yeah, are. Other like, people literally are. no one else They don't gave. have no it. They don't have girls, it. <laughs> but they are, they don't have the, the vernacular. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't have the range. But, like, they literally, the all, the, all the straight girls turning up in their, like, pretty little thing, like, dresses. And I'm like, all pink. Hi, guys. Very pink? Like, oh, literally, <laughs> everyone, everyone wore pink. pink. And everyone was, like, wearing, like, very lovely clothes. Yeah. But um, nice gowns, yeah. as the reason <laughs> <of> French <laughs> say, nice gowns. But um, I was like, no, I'm going to turn up in a T-shirt, like, a cheap H&M T-shirt I've cut with my fucking gluten belly. Like and I look like I look, I look the best, That's and all those breasts. girls were coming up to me and being like, "Bitch!" Like, yeah. But then it was so funny to see like the bar staff like of just like straight men being like, "Look at me!" Like, what? why the fuck on? is that girl's bra out? Like, <laughs> but I was living for it. I thought it was so camp. Oh my god! It's the first time I've worn a bra in years. As well. I've never had a bra. <laughs> okay, on to the next one. Oh, oh, very Jamil. Oh. Oh. oh, well, actually, I wore that dress to like three events that week, and I ch I changed it every time. Yeah. It's a Primark yeah, dress. Yeah, I saw Rita this. Aura. On the it's all. Is it all Primark? Oh. The whole outfit. Oh, the gloves included. Oh Rita Ora is like, oh, I'm gonna okay. make the, the high street cunt. Yeah, um, <laughs> and she <laughs> did. <laughs> oh no, literally like mesh gloves, and like I, I was, I felt so good. Yeah. Like, um, but, but I like, I also feel like I've. This was all, for the crown, right? Yeah, yeah, like the premiere of The Crown. It was like it was the biggest red carpet I've ever done. It was like so many stop and repeats. Like you got to stop and then like five times. Um, but yeah, it was... No, this was a serve. This I, was I was so proud yeah. to be representing for the working class yeah. girls who aren't able to afford custom. And you know, like I'm I'm wearing Primark. Yeah. I still look better than all you bitches. Looks, I used to Sorry. work in Primark. Oh, on I the fitting that. rooms. Oh. Yeah. Would you like a trans person in? Yeah, the unisex. Yeah. I worked on the unisex. Oh. But once there was a time when we were like a target of... Turfs and they would come, I in, that's they would I come into the unisex changing rooms and like put loads of posters around saying that it's like interrupting safe space for women. And Who's like, making that space unsafe yeah. right now? Because I can only think I of think one person going into that space with all that bad yeah. energy making it unsafe. Yeah. Stop bringing in the bad yeah. vibes. Stop people, the bad, yeah. people just want to try on their like Primark leggings. Yeah. It's like, let them. <laughs> people just want to shop left. <laughs> yeah. they, they do yeah, just want to shop left. Yeah. I'll just be there like, go, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. This is not my battle. No, no, you're not being paid enough to care. 
Uh, okay, on to the next. This yeah. is my favourite. This is my this favourite. Is my this favorite. is the one I was this... saying, yeah. So this is Glamour of the Year Women, sorry, Glamour Women of the Year Awards this year, the most recent one just gone. And I was really, like, nervous to wear this because, like, when you go to these red carpet events, obviously a room full of, uh, like, celebrities and important people in the media, a lot of them, like, might be secret Tories because they've got a lot of money to protect. Mm. Um, I'm... And they want them tax loopholes. Yeah. yeah, and I'm very, like, vocal <laughs> online. And even just, like going to a women of the year awards and like like just talking about transphobia because yeah. like that re- that had just i wore that just after rishi sunak said a man is a man Brilliant. and a woman is a woman no. but um i was like really nervous because i'm like i don't know if this is going to go down like a fucking fart in a, yeah. a space suit yeah. <laughs> or, or space, space suit i don't know what the saying is but yeah and i was like but do you know what everyone lived like yeah this was incredible it was such a gag and like even like the editor like deb joseph who i'm like i'm so proud to like yeah i'm just i yeah. can't believe that i'm in with like this was a fashion like moment that. and like that they, they just really like championed me and were like you know they like put me on the they made a whole like article about that outfit they were like charlie craig brings back the statement t-shirt and it was just yeah and babe i like everyone out again being the working class girl everyone is turning up with looks that cost you know mm. god knows how much or they're like alone from a stylist my thing was a 25 pound t-shirt which i got printed by fucking gary down in kensal Rise. Gaza. I, I went to Gaza. Gaza. i was like i like called up this man i'm like hi i haven't got an outfit can you print me a t-shirt today? and he's like what do you want it to say and he's like hopefully nothing offensive and i'm like <laughs> transphobia will never be <laughs> I was gonna actually we'll never be glamour. on the back. It was gonna say something a lot ruder, but I went with just tra- yeah. a Tories and we'll never be glamour. Yeah. Well. But yeah, I was very proud. No, of that, that was cool. Very I love it. Okay. Oh, I have a funny story about this. This is a funny one because I was nominated at the Diva Awards for something like something of the year. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Pussy of the year. Pussy of the year. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't. I don't know. But I was nominated for something. Love Diva. Thank you so much, Diva. Honestly, such like good allies to the trans community as well to include us in like an all women event. Um, and I was. Uh, I. I was like. I'm. I'm a bigger girl now. I'm a size eighteen at the moment. And like, I was given like. I was basically given this. They were like, you can have a dress. And I was like, the one I wanted was a size ten. I was like. I don't want those old frumpy dresses. <laughs> I want that cute one. And it's a size 10, but it was an oversized dress. Okay. So I was like, okay, can make size 10 on me, it'll be fitted. And I was like, and it was, and it was all fine yeah. and dandy until, so we're all sitting down and then we're eating. And obviously the awards are like after you've eaten like the first course. So I've eaten like all the bread on the table. <laughs> I'm gluten intolerant, girl. So, like, my fucking belly got so big that my dress popped open and I'd got to a, a stage where I was so bloated that I can't do the dress back up. And it was as my award, as my nominate, as my category was being called up, they were like, up for da-da-da, Charlie Craggs. And I'm like, Kelly, Kelly, help me! And I literally had to, a girl from across the table gave me her blazer. Like, as in, I literally couldn't do it up. My belly was so full of air that I, I had to, like, just cover up. And luckily, I didn't win, but um, thankfully, because yeah, I feel like it would be very ironic as well of, like, this, like, public perception at the moment. Oh, trans people, like, are a danger to women and, like, exposing <laughs> themselves like, in women's spaces. Go accept your award. Oh. oh, you're like, oh, thank you for the one for the biggest tits. <laughs> literally, so, like, thank God I didn't win. Kind of win, like Courtney Act, in the big brother house literally, that kind of vibe literally, yeah. but like yeah um i really enjoyed going through them little fashion moments that was cool me too yeah there was was it a nice little walk down memory lane for you yeah yeah <laughs> no yeah. No. <laughs> no although it just makes me realize that like, i need to keep turning them because yeah, there's only like five you could pick we're... from you were like <laughs> no we're here so, for it we want more i'm gonna give the gays what they want we're I'm insatiable like, um, not today <laughs> i won't give the gays what they want today unless what they want is curry but um <laughs> I'm yeah determined to to solidify myself as a fashion icon. Not even fashion icon, gay icon. Gay That's icon. the goal. Let's keep like, doing. I'm like, this is what I say as well. That, keep this in. Is that with the <laughs> with the tra- this annoys me where people are like it's gay to like trans women. If you're a straight guy who likes trans women, it's gay. And I'm like, I fucking wish like. <laughs> I would much rather date a gay guy than a straight guy. It's not the flex that the trans folks think it is because they think they're like telling me, oh, you're, yeah. you're gay. It's like, I fucking wish I was, I was like, all my friends are gay guys yeah. and they're all much hotter and much nicer and know how to wipe their bum than the straight boys I'm dealing with. So like, I'm like, yeah, like, fu- I fucking wish. You know what I mean? Like, it's so fucking annoying. And then Charlie, so as we know, it's January. And... I actually didn't know. I'm in a, like, I'm like this right now. <laughs> it's, a, it's all a blur. But we, as we enter 2024, we wanted to gauge what you think are your ins and outs for the year um, ahead. Okay. So let's fire through them. It's just going to be a little quick fire round. I so. love quick fire. Cool. So we are going with Primark. 
In or out? Out. For 2020. No offense, oh, I know I used to work there, but... Yeah, but it's out for me as well. Uh, yeah, I'm it's just out. like, I'm really yeah. like, all the looks I've done as well, I'm like, I'm not into buying fashion. I don't want to buy fashion. high street. And yeah. this is going to cock block a lot of my <laughs> ads. But like, I'm not trying to be work. Like, I just, I'm like, I, I haven't, I don't buy clothes anymore. Not since like Corona times where I was like bored in the house. Yeah, and in the house board. I'm literally <laughs> these days. I'm like, no, I'm just. I'm gonna go to yeah. a charity shop. Or no, I'm gonna, like, love you that. Know, yeah. And also, Primark isn't Primarking right. Although now. I say that, and I'm like, I literally what? Well, I'm such a liar. <laughs> no, do you know why I did that story? Just that so was just for the working class representation. No, it was right? actually like... because I was sofa surfing for six months in between my me and my mum getting oh, this okay. house. I had to sofa surf for six months, so I had no clothes because all my clothes are in storage so I literally and I'm poor like, I'm, I literally have no money like, so Rita like, Ora's going to pull through like, to me I guess I'm going to a red carpet Rita, Rita. Then, because it's all I can afford right now so you yeah, literally spent £20 on a look from Primark Was Rita Ora at that red carpet? No and imagine... she didn't share it either also like I tagged you Rita the least you could have done is reshared my post okay anyway okay um, Crocs in or out 2024 In I, I love it I yeah, mean I'm in like my Crocs. 30s now <laughs> <laughs> I'm you know I'm on the girl <laughs> when I'm dropping my kids off at school, you know. No, I actually love a croc. Really? Yeah. I've not got any crocs. I I'm also size 13, pair. though, so like, I feel like it'd be quite hard to come across. Oh, it well, must be so hard for you. Constitutional monarchy. What the fuck is out. that? What? Okay, that's enough for me. <laughs> I didn't even know what that is. I went to fashion school. I'll take constitutional monarchy. What? Oh, like the queen, yeah. the king. Oh, the queen is... Uh-uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> the queen is out for 2024. <laughs> Too real. Oh, I'm Irish. I can say that. Like they killed all my ancestors. It's fine. But yeah, out. It's an out. Girl. Do we not remember the sorry. potato yeah. famine? Come yeah, on, guys. Like, like sorry. Yeah, it's uh, the the monarchy is out for me. I would. The monarchy like, out. Okay. I'm really looking forward to being offered an MBE one day for my like activism, just so I can say no. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm good. Thank you. I'm not an MBE. I'm an MTF, honey. <laughs> anyway, press on nails. Out, like, oh. oh my god, I've done those for so many years for like events, and they like just pop off like the the minute you fucking leave the house. You can't do anything, you can't put your hand in your pocket. No, press on nails are disgusting. Also, plastic, not very good for environment. Okay. Eco friendly, yeah. guys. London, in or out? Out, out. Cause okay. I'm out. So, yeah. baby, what's when the point the, in London anymore? Yeah, when the like originals are leaving, mm, <laughs> it's not, yeah, I'm like, mm, I've been here for 31 years, I earned my diva ship, and I'm out now, so it's out. Any queer people listening, you don't have to live in London. Like, London is hard and tough. And, like, just know that, like, you can, like, have a soft life. Like, we deserve a soft life. And, like, I've moved to the countryside now. And I just want calm and tranquility. It is so nice. And I live close enough that I can get into London in, like, quick. And it's lovely to be able to come in, but also to leave and to have a bit of, like, safety and not have people spitting on my face. Yeah. I mean, to, to be fair, like, after working in London, I can just get the train back to Brighton and I'm, like, by the sea. I'm oh, like, I forget, yeah. Oh, it's peace. so nice. Yeah, Our mental so health nice. is worth so much yeah. more, you know. And it just, when you just, the shift from London to Brighton is just such a calmer, slower yeah. pace. Yeah, it's just yeah, so yeah. much nicer. Sex scenes in movies. Oh, more. More, in, we need more. In times okay. 10, yeah. <laughs> and more cuck. I'm like so tired of sex scenes just being, you just, just see like boob, a side a boob. boob. And I'm like, why do women have to get their boob out? Like pretty much. And I'm like, why, if men, if women have to get their boob out, I want to see some cock as we well. We need more, like, like, Yeah, yeah. Eyebrow piercings? I'm checking if in the room has anyone got one. <laughs> do you have one? No, no I do you not. look like you would have one. I look like um, I would have an eyebrow yeah. piercing. I'll um, take that. Um, not for me, no, but like, okay. no, but like, I'm I'm a Christian, so <laughs> just a Christian. It's against woman. my religion to get a piercing. Have you watched Saltburn? No. Oh, okay. There was an eyebrow piercing in that, and oh. it did bits. I think I okay. don't know. I enjoyed the eyebrow piercing. Okay. I mean, I'm not against it. Okay. Thursday Thursday after work drinks. Are they in uh, or out? That's so straight. That, don't even. Yeah, heterosexual don't, culture. Don't, that, uh, this is We're a not gay, acknowledging this the is question. This is a gay <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I'm not on Grinder. It's a gay app. I love that. Have you seen that? No. It's Pooja. You know the one. Oh, who's like, And she's like, people can. Oh, ask I've seen me, that. I'm yes, I have seen that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, this is a gay podcast. Why are you asking me straight questions? <laughs> okay, my bad. Yeah. I take it no, back. No, don't ask me that. Now we're on to our last one. Turning on the big light. Oh, never in. Never. No, that wasn't even in in 2003. No, okay. Or was it 2023? Sorry. Yeah. I'm still... <laughs> my trauma of, like, I'm still mentally in 2003, but as in, like, it's never been in. To turn the yeah. big light on, that is so, like, no. cheap. It's giving, like... Warm mood lighting in the corners oh, of the room Especially only. for, a, like, a trans person. Yeah. Overhead lighting is Overhead. giving, like, <laughs> clock. This is not I'm good. So, I think I'm someone that's very susceptible to, like, light. Especially when I'm hungover, I will be watching EastEnders in my sunglasses. Yeah, I'm no, just but like, also, Ugh. like, I won't even... I'm so funny about light that when I go on a day, 
way, <laughs> even if I have, to, even if there's like a close like tube station, I'll lie and say, oh, I've actually got to go to this tube station just because I don't want them to see me in tube lighting really? or bus lighting. I don't want anyone who's okay. attracted to me to see what I look like underneath. <laughs> Oh, the head half lightning. You, when it's not, not a look, candlelit dinner. Oh, unless there's a candle in the corner of the room, not even at the table. I'm like, you don't need to know what I look like. I'm getting a blue hue from your phone. Yeah. Can you lock it? Make Literally, sure it's locked. Without face tune. Yeah, it's not It's not given. Mm -hmm. Okay. Too real. <laughs> yeah, we're, okay, so no overhead lighting. No, ever! 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 Well, thank you for going through the, with them, Charlie. Thank that was a nice you. little in and out, and obviously you are the authority on what's in for 2024, so thanks for going through them with us. So as we've looked forward to what's going to be in in 2024, I think it'd be great if you could tell our audiences, what can we expect from you? What's next for Charlie Craggs? Let me think what's next for Charlie Craggs. I mean... I mean, first things first is I'm doing... I'm Charlie Self Defence Angels. Oh, that. Well, I was yeah, actually okay. say I'm hosting National Student National Pride National Student Pride. Year, so come down, 23rd to Round 25th. Round of applause. Yay. After literally, like, <laughs> I've been an OG of Student Pride, like, before yeah. you were born. <laughs> You've before been you were fish. born. Before you were being called gay in school. I was doing panels every year for, like, literally the last, like, almost 10 years, I feel like. That I'm, wild. like, a staple on the scene of, like, every year the kids are like, why are you bringing her again? Who is this woman? But now, like, I've, She's got in to, the inner I've worked circle, my guys. way up. That, like, now I've gone for like panels. Now I'm like doing, um, I'm hosting now a tea and coffee hosting. this year. So, really excited. Also, great hosting duo, may oh, I add. Yeah, babe, that's gonna be great. It's giving Tracy Beaker and Justine Littlewood. Do you know that? Are you yes, two, yeah. of course yeah. I know that reference. We okay. look like them so much because <laughs> when I my hair's curly, bug off a lane. Like, yeah, anyway, yeah. but yeah, that's next. And then this year, I'm gonna do another book because, okay. um, I'm realizing, like I said, with like being a bit more vocal online. Um, and straight white men in boardrooms who are allocating funding for ads not liking it so much I'm realising I'm having to rely on myself a bit more so I'm starting a podcast I'm going to do my next book um, I'm going to what else I'm going to hopefully do more acting oh, after okay. that Doctor Who thing um, well, we did intro you as Charlie Craig's actress so... uh, yeah, well that's because I told you to <laughs> I was like, push the actress <laughs> so, Charlie, just to wrap up the podcast have you got any final words for our LGBTQ plus listeners out there that you'd like to leave them with? Yeah, bully the bully. Bully the bully. Yeah. And if you want to know how to bully yeah. the bully, follow Charlie Follow Craig. me on Instagram and I'll tell you how. <laughs> Join my Patreon. Shameless plug. I'm literally thinking, I'm like, I can just start a Patreon and then people can like ask me for insults to say to me. Well, you know my, I do my whole like yeah. T and LGBTs will try me bitch yeah. thing where I just like clap back at people. I'm like, oh baby, send me your but like, receipts. Let's move to back. like a verbal self-defense class. Like a clap back class. Yeah. Oh, oh God, franchise. Rather than self-defense yeah. classes, is clap back classes. Just reading like insult classes, little yeah. 14 year old boys on the tube. Well, thank you so much for jumping on the podcast, Charlie. Thank you for it's been me. amazing having you. And and if you want to catch Charlie at the NSP event this year, she'll be hosting with Tea or Coffee on the twenty third to the twenty fifth. Mm -hmm. And so grab your tickets. And grab my tits. Grab <laughs> <laughs> that was great. We're keeping that yeah, in. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah, that was